We already know that 2024 is highly ambitious for the Artemis project to make that return to the moon, but a new study suggests that it would be good to stick to that timeline because of extreme solar weather that is predicted. Three, two, one. There. A new study just came out suggesting that a return to the moon later this decade could put astronauts at major risk and it's because of maximum solar activity expected. The sun is a scary place. Um, you're, you're sitting a mere 93 million miles from an unshielded nuclear fusion reactor. And what do we mean by maximum solar activity? That means that if you are an astronaut heading to the moon, outside the protective Van Allen belt, you might be more exposed to a radiation flare. There's a 22 year solar cycle. The magnetic field kind of goes up and down and up and down. And it's actually a, like a sine wave. So essentially every 11 years, there's a plus and a minus phase. Uh, every 11 years, the solar activity gets really strong. There are a lot more sunspots. So in December, 2019, we started solar cycle 25. So that is an odd numbered solar cycle. And these maximum extremes tend to happen later in the odd numbered solar cycles. So the solar maximum is expected to happen in 2023 to 2029. And that should mean it will be a pretty nasty time for space weather. The surface of the sun is a turbulent place. Uh, and that's due partly to this convection mixed with magnetic fields. There is weather in space. The surface of the sun has gas and plasma erupting, ejecting those charged particles into the rest of the solar system. This is happening at millions of miles per hour. These particles can strike Earth and the moon in just a matter of minutes. Every now and again, the sun burps and shoves off huge balls of plasma as big as the Earth, although not a lot of mass in them, they're very thin. Uh, and those are called coronal mass ejections, CMEs. Um, and there's also, uh, there are sunspots, which are areas of intense magnetic field that flares come from. And if you look at the sun in X-rays, these active regions, as they're called, look really bright in X-rays. Uh, so there's all kinds of radiation coming from them, there's particles. Uh, so all these particles hit the Earth's protective magnetic field. The Van Allen belts actually protect us from the radiation coming in from the sun, from the particles coming in from the sun. Here at home, we don't have to be as concerned, but for astronauts making a return to the moon, well, they could be at great risk. There is always the possibility that you get an unexpected flare and it's pointed right at the Earth Moon system and the astronauts are threatened with getting a big dose of radiation. This could be really dangerous for astronauts, both for those flying to the moon and for those working or landing on a lunar outpost. Life support systems and power could shut down. Solar activity could produce life threatening levels of radiation. What would that look like? You know? Yes, I'm not sure. I don't think it would look like anything except that it would up their cancer risk years down the line okay so i don't think it would be at the level of oh they immediately die of radiation sickness or something like that i just want to mention that the, there was a solar max in around 1968 so the apollo astronauts were at right at pretty much right at solar max wow. in the late 60s early 70s uh and they didn't stop them so that says to me that i wouldn't be overly worried about it uh, it might be that we uh, we have a lot better measurement now. Uh, we have uh, probes in orbit around the sun that can say, oh, there's an active area. So we're working on, on better space weather forecasting. And so you might see, um, okay, there's an active region that might come. So we're gonna postpone the Artemis launch for a few weeks, for a month, or something like that. So in the study, the big takeaways are that if the launch has to be delayed from 2024, which is kind of unlikely, to 2026, they're saying maybe they should delay it even further. But it's also a good idea to make sure that the spacecraft has the right hardware to safeguard astronauts from an event like a CME. Having a part of the spacecraft that's better shielded, that you could hide in, perhaps. Uh, certainly on the surface of the moon, if you have a moon base, you have an under, you know, you want to dig an underground sort of cave thing where you can go to if there's a lot of radiation. The good news is you always at least would have some warning 
of a flare, right? Because the flare is traveling at less than the speed of light and you can detect the light, the X-rays from it. And so you, you, you would have, you know, at least a few hours warning to go batten down the hatches. Not enough to go, oh, you're 80% of the way to the moon. You've got to come home now. You won't have time to come home before it hits you. Uh, but if you're on the surface of the moon, you could at least go into a shelter. So obviously we want to go back to the moon, but we want to make sure to keep astronauts as safe as possible. So my question to you, do you think that it's even possible for them to make this happen before 2026 or should they take their time and wait until the decade is over? It's, it's, a, it's a usual risk thing in space, right? How much do you invest in uh, making the whole process more complicated to guard against this risk versus just going, yeah, well, this is the risk they take and, and uh, just hoping it doesn't get them. It's a risk. I mean, going to the moon is risky. Thanks again for clicking on this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit subscribe and I will be bringing you new videos very soon. I appreciate all of the support. Until then, see you soon.